The iPhone 15 Pro Max after 182 days. Should you buy it? Is it worth it? Have I enjoyed it? Would I kick it out of the house if it was my roommate? These things and many more scintillating topics will be discussed by me here in this edition of the Painfully Honest Tech Show. Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. If you want tech so honest it hurts in your feed all the time, <laughs> hit that subscribe button. Notify yourself with the notification bell. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. If you've been here before, thanks so much for coming back for more. It would be easy to say uh, it's, an, it's another iPhone, uh, which it is. These days... Uh, the kind of consistency you get from buying pretty much any flagship phone makes it not a very risky purchase. It's almost, almost boring. From year to year, there aren't really many whiz-bang new features that are going on that we used to get so excited for. But there are things to talk about because living with a phone is kind of like living with a roommate. 182 days in, you kind of know what you like about the situation and what drives you nuts about the situation. And there are things that drive me a little bit nuts about the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but there are also things that I really enjoy. So let's get started with uh, build and durability. As we look here, um, there's really no, there are no scratches on this thing whatsoever. The screen is free of scratches, the back, the sides, the titanium, rails are doing their titanium thing. And um, it's really uh, kind of surprising because I've been using this phone sans, uh, sans case for probably 80% of the time. I do have a couple of cases that I use from time to time. Uh, it is a lighter phone than the previous iPhone Pro uh, phones. And the titanium plus the titanium color schemes that we've got is a nice touch. Um, I think I would have preferred to get the darker titanium, the space black, or whatever they're calling it, uh, instead of this. It, it is a very nice color. It photographs well, that kind of thing. But um, I think I would have really preferred the darker color because this sometimes looks a little bit gold, and gold is not really my thing. In use, this thing is, um, I guess you could say, very iPhone-like, uh, which is to say mostly it is pretty seamless and causes no problems but uh, there are some places that, I mean, it kind of feels a little clumsy and like things aren't quite working the way that they should be. And it gets kind of frustrating. I've had no real problems with battery life exactly. Uh, the battery has been actually very, very good. I'm at 85% now. It's 1130 on a, on a Friday morning. And I'll probably get back down to... Um, somewhere around 50. Sometimes I get below 50. Sometimes I stay around 60. It doesn't really use that much battery. I have noticed since the recent uh, iPhone 17.4 uh, update that the battery life hasn't been quite as good, but there's a new update that I still have to install that might actually uh, make that a little bit better. iPhone 17 generally, generally I mean, it's, it's, it's fine. Uh, iOS is at this point a little dull. It is very functional. It ha I, Apple has a way that they want you to do what they want you to do. And this kind of makes you do it that way. I'm starting to find iOS though, a little bit clunky. The widgets aren't really set up to do things the way that they should do, even though they have interactive widgets now. Um, the focus feature, which, you know, you can set up different focus features like book reading and all kinds of different stuff. I've tried to use them. <laughs> I spent hours trying to sort of set it up so that when I'm doing something or a different time of the day or something like that, I can have different focus features going on, but ultimately they have just been a disaster. So I just don't use them. I just don't use them at all. See here, you've got do not disturb, mindfulness, personal reading, sleep work. And I just had to kind of turn them all off because they were not, um, they were not working well and they would be on at different times that would be really annoying to me. So I just I just had to turn them off. I don't wanna spend that much time micromanaging my phone. So I, uh, yeah, the focus stuff is a cool idea. Actually, the new Samsung 
uh, One UI 6, whatever, 6, whatever it is right now, has different focus features that you can kind of get set up to go at different times. And you you can have a widget on the front of your phone to, to trigger them. And it seems a lot more useful. But again, I don't really... <laughs> don't really want to micromanage my phone quite that much. Now, the action button, I was pretty excited about the action button, uh, but after six months, I think I'd rather have the mute switch back. I've mapped this thing to my camera, hold to open, and it opens my camera, but I never remember that. I just use like this guy here to get into my camera. So I, uh, eh. It's not really doing anything. You can do a lot of different stuff with the action button. You can set it up for the camera. You can go to silent mode, focus, you choose a focus mode, uh, flashlight, voice memo, uh, translation and magnifier. And then you can actually accessibility shortcuts. You can do a lot of different stuff with the action button. However, um, I just never find a time to use it. Part of the problem is it's way up here, right? And I mean, I can get there if I kind of, you know, walk my finger up there. But the problem is like the mute switch being up here was fine because you only had to access the mute switch when you wanted to mute the phone. But now that it's like doing different stuff, like it, you kind of have to walk your thumb up the phone. I've got relatively big hands, so it's not that big a deal for me, but it's not in the most functional place, I think. On the software side, there are some new features in iOS 17 that are pretty cool. One of which is standby mode. If you have a MagSafe charger that you have by your bedside or at your desk or something, and you put this thing horizontally, it will show you the a clock and some pictures. I wish that it showed the weather and I haven't been able to figure out how to get it to show the weather. Um, that's really, <laughs> like those are the two things. When I wake up in the morning, I wanna know what time is it and like, what's the weather? I live in Iowa, the weather could be any any number of things. It's snowing today at the end, end part of March. Um, we got four inches of snow today. So I wanna know what the weather is. I haven't been able to figure out how to get that on the standby, but it is a very cool feature. Um, Interactive widgets are a new thing, uh, I guess, but I, as much as I like the idea of widgets on iOS, I've found that they've just been kind of not all that great. I, I just don't, I just don't care for them at all. It doesn't show me enough. And so I have to go into the app anyway. And if I have to go into the app anyway, then maybe I would just like to... <laughs> I would just like to open the app with a smaller icon than to have this big widget on here. What I end up doing is I have um, I have this sort of block of icons of stuff that I use pretty regularly. This one, this one is actually a widget that is sort of dynamic and it changes what's in there from time to time. And then the rest I have uh, just chosen stuff that I use all the time. And then of course I have my app library and I can search for anything that I want in the app library at any time. I can also search for anything that I want at any time from this screen as well. And that's usually how I end up choosing my, whatever I'm looking for. I'll just start, you know, typing and then it'll show me whatever app. When, and it gives me some suggestions, like maybe I wanna to go to Twitter or Facebook or the camera or the Nest app. You know, those are the things that I used most recently. So that's all very cool. They also came up with uh, contact posters, which I think is a pretty cool option. And the contact poster is basically, well, I have too many versions of my wife in here. So the contact poster will show you like a, a full scale picture of who's calling and all that. And I like that quite a bit. Uh, so there's, <laughs> There's my wife. She is my emergency contact, uh, and, and so I like I like the um, I like the contact posters. It's more dynamic. I, I know that it's something that Android has had for quite some time, but um, it's it's still a pretty cool feature. Live voicemail. Now this is a feature that I'm into. If you're getting a call and someone's starting to leave a voicemail, you can actually like tap a button and it just starts like reading out in in text what the the voicemail is saying um which i is a very cool feature and again i we're going to see more and more stuff like this as ai gets more and more built into phones i mean i only get two kinds of phone calls i get phone calls from people that i don't want to talk to who are trying to sell me something or something like that or i get phone calls from family 
but usually uh, if somebody from my family calls me, they aren't leaving a message other than my mom and my mom passed away a few months ago. So, so no one's leaving me a voicemail, but the few times that I've used it, it's been pretty cool and, and it's helped me sort of weed out some spam calls and that kind of thing. There's also new stickers in in here and I haven't used them so I don't care. Another feature that's new in iOS 17 is the journal app. I was pretty excited for the journal app uh, when it came out and I did a few journal entries. It kind of is just like day one if you've used that app before where it suggests different things. This is a memory. This is uh, you know a trip that I took back home and did some music stuff. And then here's a place where I, I, I played a gig and it suggested that I write about that. Uh, if you tap this, you get journaling suggestions and highlights from photos. Take a moment to write something about some write about something special in your life you've been taking for granted. Well, that's any number of things. So it does give you these prompts. Uh, you can just hit new entry and go from there. The one problem with the journal app in my estimation, is that it's only on the iPhone. And while I have my iPhone with me most of the time, and it's probably the one device that I use that's most often with me, so that kind of makes sense. Writing a journal entry on an iPhone is kind of annoying. Uh, and so I just found it not the best way. I would love, for, I would love to have the journal app on a Mac, on the iPad, someplace where writing in like a full scale way would be more useful, more, um, I guess not useful, but easier to do than just thumb typing. But you know, maybe other people don't have a problem with it. Maybe they love it. Uh, I love the idea of the journal app and I think it's a pretty cool feature, but I'd love to have it on other Apple devices. Messaging has a bunch of new stuff where you can do, you know, check, you can like check in when somebody gets to a destination, like your kid's going to school, it'll send you a text if you set that up. You have a search function in messages now, which which is nice. You can search for somebody. Uh, it gives you suggestions for things that you might wanna search for. Those are the ones that I've been using most often. And so I, I, messages is becoming more feature rich, which I think is a good thing overall. Oh, you can also receive audio messages uh, which I find kind of annoying. I don't really want audio messages. Um, <laughs> transcribed audio messages, fine. But, you know, I, I don't want, like, audio messages, people talking to me in my... Uh, again, just me. A lot of the apps in iOS have now um, got a bunch of new features, and it's really kind of outside of the scope of this video to go through them all, but it feels like there isn't a core app in iOS 17 that hasn't had some kind of tweak in some way. I haven't taken the time to really use them all and sort of dig into all that. So if you wanna see a video that's more about the apps and what's changed and stuff like that, let me know down in the comments and I'll make that video for you. The camera, uh, there's not really much to complain about. The camera has, it, it has always been good. It's still good. You've got your video, you've got your photo, you've got your portrait, you've got your pan panoramic. Uh, you've got your cinematic, you've got your slow-mo, you got your time-lapse. The only thing that I would say at this point is you can change things like the f-stop and all that, and you can change quickly the different uh, shutter speed and the resolution and those kinds of things. You tap that and you get those things down here. Uh, exposure you can change as well. I think it's time though for Apple to, to just go ahead and give us a pro mode um, in... <laughs> in the camera that's that's it's time it's time i don't want to have to use a third-party app to get to a pro mode to be able to to do what i want to do uh it should be an option like it is in a lot of other phones i do still have some annoyances with the camera that are um a little bit more difficult to to get around um so we go to photo and when we go to photo we still have live photo I don't think anybody has ever used live photos. When when live photos came out in 2015, uh, you could set a wallpaper that was kind of a live photo. Uh, but other than that, there's never really been any use for a live photo. And when you transfer them to other places, they end up as videos and you can't really use them as photos all the time. It is set to live photo by default. 
So until you go into the into the settings and tell the camera app to keep the settings as you last left them, and then you turn off live photos, every time you open the camera, you will be using live photos, and then you won't realize it for a while, and then you'll be upset, annoyed. Oh, maybe not you, me, <laughs> me. So what is the best change about the iPhone 17 Pro Max? Well, I'll tell you. It's, it's this thing right here, <laughs> the USB-C. I don't necessarily like USB-C better. Uh, it's actually, it was actually easier to plug in lightning just by a little bit. In the seven years since USB-C was introduced, it has become the standard for a lot of different things, even stuff that was micro USB is now USB-C. <laughs> I become more and more frustrated whenever I have to use a different connector uh, as opposed to USB-C because 95, 99% of everything that I have is USB-C. So having to uh, go find a lightning cable or go find a micro USB, I think my Kindle and like a couple of pairs of headphones are the only things that still use uh, micro USD. And of course, if I want to use my Apple peripherals, I, I, I have to get a lightning cable out. I don't know if I want to charge them, if I want to hook them up to another device. It's just very, very annoying. My favorite feature overall is not something that came with the iPhone 15 Pro Max or the iPhone 15 line, uh, but MagSafe. It's not new, but it I it's what I appreciate the most. It's made my life the most easy. It just makes charging and travel so much easier. Uh, my I have a MagSafe car dock that I just, I just sort of drop this thing on there and, and it magnetizes to it and it charges it and I can see my phone and I don't have to deal with like crab claw clamps and those kinds of things, which are always cheaper than they should be or more expensive than they ought to be. And they fall apart anyway, so it's not all that great. So those are the, that's the overview, but what is not still, or what is newly not good? about the iPhone 15 Pro Max. From a hardware standpoint, not, not much at all. Uh, I've sort of gone through my foibles there, but autocorrect is still a disaster. There are times when it tells me a word is misspelled and I can't get it to change to the spelling that I wanna use. I have to do it like three times, so it finally relents. There are times when it changes correctly spelled words to something completely different from, the, out of nowhere. Sometimes I have to look up the words that it's changed to because I don't know what they mean. Uh, and I have a master's of fine arts in, in writing. Um, my, vo my vocabulary is pretty decent. So there's something going on with autocorrect. I can't believe that they can't get it fixed by this point. So I don't know. And, and of course, if you're gonna talk about what's not working with an iPhone, Siri has to be mentioned. And with AI coming in, Siri is going to be like a, a big deal in, or maybe they're just gonna drop Siri altogether because it's been 12 years and Siri is still more useless than ever. For some reason, when I long press the home button on my phone now, it opens up a type window. I didn't tell it to do that. I don't know why it's doing that. I'm sure that I could fix it, but I didn't wanna fix it. I want it to be right. Yeah, so when I have that type window and I'm anywhere near a HomePod, it'll go over to the HomePod and tell me that it can't do what it says. It, I, I don't, I don't know. It just won't do it. It's time for Siri to just like shit or get off the pot. Apple needs to figure out if Siri is the thing they're going to do after 12 years. It's not good and it's not getting better. So let's figure out what's going on. It's time to let us put things on the home on the home screens where we want to. At this point, um, it's frustrating and pointless to be restricted this way. I, I just want to be able to like move things. Like if I want to have an empty screen, I want to I don't want to have to trick the operating system into having an empty screen. On an Android phone, I can have just a clock. Here, I I can't. <laughs> you know, if I want to move this down here, it won't go down there. It just goes back up there. So everything just goes to the top and um, it's very annoying. I just I just wanna be able to put all this stuff where I want it to be and not have to deal with this, but I can't. 
And I also want to do away with this page here, this widgets page that's just, I mean, these are all the same widgets that you can use over here. So maybe I should just have this and then this and the app, the app library, and that should be the end of it. Some of the stuff about iOS is just not well, well thought through. You know, they've picked up some features here and there from Android, and uh, I'm glad that they've brought them over. However, they just don't, they just don't work as well as they, as they should. To sum up, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is an, is an excellent phone. Best iPhone they've ever made. Uh, <laughs> best iPhone. Of course, it's the best iPhone. Uh, it's the smoothest transition I've ever had going from uh, an iPhone, one iPhone to the next. I went from the 12 Pro Max to the 15 Pro Max, and it w I didn't even notice that I had changed, which is kind of a good thing, but also kind of a bad thing because, like, you want to feel like you're using a new phone. But that's just a testament to, like, how well Apple has made that process work. All I did was sign into iCloud, and I was I was ready to go. Uh, no hiccups, no nothing. Uh, you know, I had to sign into a few things, et cetera, et cetera. But it was very, very smooth. That in itself is an impressive feat. But it also speaks to what will become bigger and bigger issues for Apple as time goes on. From year to year, there's uh, this is going to be a problem for Apple. From year to year, there's there's no... If, if my experience on the iPhone 12 Pro Max and my experience on the 15 Pro Max are so similar. Why would I buy the 15 Pro Max? I mean, this is definitely a better phone. It has all the features that we just talked about, but it's not wildly different. It is a better experience, but it's not absolutely crazy different. So I don't know if the uh, iPhone 16 is going to bring anything more exciting. This isn't a dig at Apple. I'm not complaining. Uh, this kind of consistency, the iterative improvement really is something to admire. And they're Definitely not the only phone manufacturer at this point out there making basically the same phone every year. There are plenty of improvements, but they're not life-altering improvements. Maybe next year, I mean, AI is the thing. Maybe maybe next year, the iPhone 16 Pro Max will have AI out the wazoo, and it'll be absolutely worth buying. But the iPhone has reached that point where you get software updates for five-plus years, the phone is well made and doesn't get broken. You don't even need a case at this point. So it doesn't really matter which iPhone you buy, as long as you still get the new iOS updates, you're getting the majority of all the new features. The iPhone 15 Pro Max is the best phone that Apple's ever made, but it's also a phone you don't need to buy unless you just lost upgrade support for your phone. Like in this year, that's the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, and the iPhone 10. So if you have the 11 all the way up, you're good. Of course, the 11 will lose will lose support probably next year, but uh, we can't really say until that time comes. And now we get to the question. Should you buy the iPhone 15 Pro Max or wait until the 16 Pro Max comes out? The only real difference I know between the phones right now will be more AI features. And Apple has more AI in there than people think that they do. They just don't, they just don't, touted as a feature they give it different names and and that kind of thing but they aren't pushing ai the way that uh, other phone manufacturers have been it could be that those features are hardware specific to the newer phone and so therefore if you want those features you have to upgrade to the iphone 16 but at this point we don't know so i would say if you have an iphone that works now and is newer than the iphone 10 or 8 or 8 plus and is getting software updates, it won't kill you to wait, at which point you can choose whether to buy the iPhone 15 Pro Max or whatever iPhone's flavor you want, or you can get the new phone. They're both, they're both gonna be fantastic phones, the best iPhone Apple's ever made. There's also no reason why you should wait. If you need a phone, get a phone. The iPhone 15 line is really, really good. 
Let me know what your experiences have been with the iPhone 15 line down in the comments below. Let me know if you have any questions or other videos that you would like me to do, and I will do that. Don't forget to subscribe. Come back and see me a little bit more here on the Painfully Honest Tech channel where I will talk about some Apple stuff, some, you know, just, yeah. So come back and see me. Once again, my name is Jason, sometimes known as the JT. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I am out.